Hey everyone! Welcome to the long procrastinated second episode of my Source Filmmaker lighting tutorial. I did a poll on some Discord servers and it seems like most people really want to know how to do scene build lighting. And it's probably one of the things I get asked the most. I'll be linking in the description some Discord servers where you can find me and message me with any questions or feedback. I just can't promise to answer everything instantly, but I'll make sure to read everything when I can. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. I'll be using this rather simple but large scene I've been working on for a few months. It's not my best, but it could be really useful to showcase most of the steps to decent lighting. I'll be focusing on sunny slash clear daylight, cause it's probably what people try to do the most and fail. Plus, you can take anything you see here and apply it on other scenarios with relative ease. In this scene, we have a clear foreground, the living room, middle ground, the buildings and the citadel, and background, the mountains. And we'll be using that distinction to optimize our workflow, doing each scene one at a time. Firstly, let's get some concepts out of the way. The first one we'll be looking at is ambient lighting. Ambient lighting is used to simulate diffuse lighting in a scene coming from, in this case, the sky. In this scene, the sky would give almost everything a blue hue, most importantly but not exclusive to the shadows. This is often overlooked because it's not very clear in our day-to-day -day lives, but on sunny days we have blue shadows, not black or grey. This is a great concept to understand even when doing portraits of single characters. We'll also be giving ambient lighting its own shadows, but that's for the actual tutorial part. The second part is ambient lighting. Bounce lighting refers to light that bounces off surfaces and lights up areas that would otherwise be in shade. Light bounces all over the place. That's why a sliver of light seeping through a window can brighten up an entire room. This is incredibly important, especially in scenes that take place indoors or near structures, as it really changes how things look. And the third and last we'll be covering is fog. Fog really helps to give a sense of scale and is often overlooked as well. It's not that complicated and will probably be quickly understood by everyone, but it's still really important. So let's get into the actual scene. Considering the sky is very bright and very blue, I wanted to sort of come in through the door while also being blocked by the walls. This will be easily done by setting up a dim but large blue light in front of the door, sharpening its shadows and raising the radius to a very high value. Overriding the default ones might be necessary. I usually go between 100 to 150, whichever works first, then increasing the FOV to about the same value of 150. If the result pleases me, I move on to the middle ground. Here I won't need shadow lights because their effect would be really not noticeable, so I'll only make them really big and try to cover, cover the buildings to make them uniformly lit, as if light is coming from all directions at an equal rate. This will make it so all shadows are blue while remaining dim. I won't need more than two as the side of the buildings opposite to the camera won't be visible regardless, so that's unnecessary detail. Again, if I'm pleased with the result, I move on to the mountains. The mountains are really far away which means they'll be foggy and that will make them darker. I'll still give them a uniform shade, but that's not as bright. Now for the sun, I'll use a light for each section of the scene. If you don't know how to create a sun SFM, I'll link an amazing video by Arga Demon in the description. He details how to properly set up a light that reaches very far. I'd also recommend increasing your shadow map resolution. This is done by adding the command SFM underscore shadow map res, followed by any multiple of 1024 to your SFM properties on Steam. I personally use 8192 which is technically 8K resolution. It really tasks your computer, but it makes these scene builds look much better because the shadows will be much more accurate.
Once I'm done setting up the sun in a way that makes sense and looks good, I'll work on bounce lights. Keep in mind I've used about two or three lights for the sun in the scene because of how I want it to be set up. You may only need one depending on your build. Bounce lights are usually done in SFM by adding a shadowless dim light facing directly opposite of where the sun is hitting, while also changing the color of the light to be similar to that of the surface that is being lit. So if it's a yellow wall, the light's gonna be kind of yellowish. Or if it's a red wall, you get it. This improves the quality of a scene tenfold, but it's often done at your own discretion. You can be really accurate or focus more on looking pretty rather than photorealism. After doing it a few times, you start to get a sense of what fits better for you. Lastly, we'll add a simple fog. I like to do that by creating some really big volumetric lights. I get their intensity down to near zero and crack up and crank up the volumetric intensity to stupid levels so I get the fog without the light. After this, tweak everything you deem necessary. If you're happy with the result, you're pretty much there. Now, there are two things you have to keep in mind, always. The first one is, it won't look good. If you're working on your first scene builds, you probably won't be happy with the results, and that's okay. No one is born knowing how to work with 3D software. I surely wasn't. And number two, there is always room for improvement. 
Even if you're happy with the result, you'll probably get a lot of feedback. A lot of it possibly negative. Take it with the chin up, because you may just end up learning something new. And that's it! I hope I was able to help you learn at least something new today. Take everything I say with a pinch of salt though. I have experience with SFM, but I'm not a god. This is just how I taught myself. And you can have your own workflows, which don't look anything like mine, and that's okay. And if you made it here, you're my new favorite person. If you found this useful, make sure to let me know by either liking or writing a comment, and maybe even sharing it with people you might think need some help. And see you in the next one, which will come sooner, hopefully. I already have some ideas and some uh, themes to approach. So yeah, Sa see ya.